What's up, gurus? I just want to go over one of, um, I think, the most common formulas that I come across on the equipment side of things, and it's called the sensible heat formula. Um, if you haven't seen it before, uh, I think it'd be good to get familiarize yourself with it. And if you have seen it before, because a lot of people have, uh, I want to go over at least a specific application on it uh, when you're either trying to figure out what the capacity is on a piece of equipment. Um, you also can use it for performances on an energy recovery ventilator. You can use it on um, the actual BTUs on a building if you're talking about something across the wall or um, anything like that. But I'm going to use equipment specifically on this example. Um, let's go over the equation real quick. Okay, it's BTUs equals 1.08 multiply that by delta T and you multiply that by CFM and real quick before I go into the actual equation I want to make a comment about what 1.08 is it actually has to do with a specific weight of air and also um, this will be affected by elevation change so uh, 1.08 is is sea level but also you know as you get more humid or less humid um, elevation goes up or down this could change and so a matter of fact in in Utah where I'm from this is actually 0.9 uh, the low 0.9s <clears throat> but anyway let's just for to simplify it I want to go use 1.08 and consider the sea level all right so here's the equation great dandy so what I'm like why would you use this all right let's use this as an example so i can show you what it's used for and um if i'm if i'm going over a coil sorry it's a little crooked and i'm going to call this a direct expansion or a dx coil it could be chilled water uh, honestly that doesn't matter too much but in here i have an entering air temperature and i have a leaving air temperature of that coil specifically if I take the difference between these two, that would end up being the delta T that I'm, I'm going to calculate. All right. Uh, to put some orientation here, let's say there's my blower and there's my supply air. And so this is what makes up my piece of equipment here. All right, you know, there could be filters, there could be a lot of other stuff, and also I know someone's probably going to point out there, there's motor heat that usually will, will raise your supply air versus your LAT, but that's okay. Right now I'm just going to size up what this coil is going to do by using this equation. <clears throat> um, for illustration, I'm going to mix some air in here, okay, and say that my return air is mixing with my outside air. And I'm pointing that out specifically because sometimes you might see this referred to as mixed air temperature when you're trying to figure out what that is in an economizer section for, uh, for an example. But in this case, because I have nothing with heat gain, no motor, nothing like that that could either gain or loss in um, heat, my mixed air temperature and my entering air temperature in this case is the exact same. But... Um, EAT and LAT. All right. Well, let's say my entering air temperature is 80 degrees. Um, and where that comes from is, let's say my return, say 75, and it's, I don't know, 95 degrees outside. Um, depending on percentage, this can change. But for this example, I'm going to say my entering air temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and my leaving air is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So in this case, my, or sorry, that's a little low. I'm going to say 55 degrees. Um, yeah, anyway, that's, I back that out a little bit. All right, so I'm going to use 55 degrees because 50 is a little cold for me. Um, all right, so my delta T in this example ends up being 80 minus 55 or in, um, in the equation, I'm going to be able to plug in 25 degrees. Okay? And then no, there's another thing in here, my CFM. A lot of times, if you're an air balance guy, you can calculate this or measure this with using some sort of, uh, hopefully I can do this in 3D, um, some hood 
of some sorts that is calibrated and you can take this venturi and measure an airflow on here um, sometimes people use this really um, simplistic um, more of a guesstimate than anything but uh, there's a device that can sit there and measure airflow and then you can calculate that through the cross-sectional area of your uh, whatever you're measuring to get a CFM and in this case I'm just gonna say it's 800 CFM but this would end up being measured on site so if my CFM is 800 and my Delta T is 25 then now I can calculate my BTUs of this equipment and specifically this coil itself um, technically my my supply air could be different than my leaving air but whatever you want to measure you can say it, it's either the unit or the coil but in with all these numbers that I have um, whoops I'm going to calculate the BTUs equals 1.08 multiply that by 25 degrees Delta T and I multiply that by 800 CFM and to follow along with that let me open up my calculator 1.08 times 25 times 800 all right 21,600 so if I have 21,600 BTUs then now I know what my piece of equipment's doing um, I think it's important to point out too a lot of people use from their CFM they'll use a rule of thumb of CFM of 400 per ton and the reason why I wanted to point that out is where that pretty much comes from is that a lot of targets for these units on the coils themselves is between 20 and 25 degrees on the Delta T and it is a little derated here and stuff like that but that's where you would end up getting um, if I'm doing 800 CFM then that would end up approximating the unit to be a two ton unit but because I use this example I also wanted to use, show you where that rule of thumb usually actually comes from and that's a targeted Delta T um, hopefully that works for you if um, you have any questions um, put it in the comments below uh, please like and subscribe this video and hopefully we'll see you on future videos thanks gurus